So hello everyone. <clears throat> I'm Ankur from the Justin at SUSE, and I'm here today at OpenSUSE Conference 2024 to give you an update on the same demo I already did on OpenSUSE Conference 2023 about the current status of Agama, which is the uh, evolution of the Just and AutoJust installers. <clears throat> Uh, first, I must say that I'm feeling a bit sick today, so I will need to use a lot of water to prevent my voice from, from failing, so sorry for the inconvenience uh, in advance. <clears throat> so, uh, the main difference with this demo on the, on the one last year is that I plan to, be, uh, to have way less theory and more action. There will be actually two demos for the price of one, which means double the risk to, to fail. And, and the first demo will be uh, the full installation process, and we will use it to show all the uh, advantages that the new architecture brings. And the second demo will be more focused on the storage area, which is the most complex one, and there are several things we want to show. And I would like to close the presentation talking a bit about the future and inviting you to a follow-up session that will be held tomorrow. It will be uh, driven by Joseph about yeah, what the future development of Agama could be and what that can bring, not only to Agama, but also to the, to the OpenSUSE project. So let's jump directly to this very small theoretical recap. So for those who don't know, uh, Agama is basically an initiative from the Just team to build, to use the Just internals and then build on top of it a, a modern interface, a modern user interface, and a set of, of APIs. So those Just uh, internals can be used from other uh, uh, infrastructure. And actually, most aspects of it that, uh, are equally the same that the last year, so I will not repeat myself. In, the, in, in OpenSUSE Conference 2023, I already explained the motivation to have uh, to have a gamma, uh, the general architecture, and the main advantages of the of that architecture. So I will not repeat myself because that's on YouTube and it's also on media.ccc.de. So you can watch it there and you can even watch it at twice the speed. So it's all all good. But there are actually some things that some things that have changed. Like uh, in that demo, I told you that we were using uh, Copic components as, as the core of Agama. For those who don't know, Copic is a web-based configuration tool for Linux. So I told you we were using the Copic technologies, but what I, the interface I, I saw you was, had nothing to do with the Copic interface. So now, now all that has switched somehow, and you will, uh, as, as soon as you see Agama, you will see that uh, it resembles a lot the UI of Copic, but now there is a, no Copic under the hood anymore. And those are two big changes that are actually quite recent, and they are still in progress. Uh, so uh, in some parts, we still have the old architecture that was somehow uh, mandated by Copic coexisting with the new one. So those parts are currently slower than they should be. And also, when we go deeper in the user interface, there will be some inconsistencies here and there. We are working to fix all that. At the same time, we are evolving other aspects of Agama. We are policing all that. It will take a, a couple of months until everything is, is perfect again, or maybe a bit shorter if we get your pull requests, fixing stuff. So let's start with the demo. So enough talking. So I have a virtual machine open here somewhere that is basically showing the very first screen you see if you boot uh, your machine using Agama Live. Agama Live is uh, basically a live version of Thunderweed that simply boots and opens Agama graphical interface in full screen, and that's it. So if you do so, the first thing you will see is this product selection script, or in, well, in, in the just jargon, we call products to the distributions. So that gives me the perfect excuse to remind you that Agama, just like Yast and AutoJust, is a multi-distribution installer. So it can install basically all the OpenSUSE distributions and all the SUSE ones. And for each distribution, we can configure what the user can touch, what the user cannot touch, uh, what is the default packages to install, and so on and so on. Sorry, Lubos, uh, Lib is still not here. Lubos is uh, trying to also make Lib uh, part of this list, and I'm pretty sure that will happen during the following weeks. 
But uh, actually, uh, uh, for the Just team, the main goal is, is SUSE Linux Enterprise 16. We are uh, trying to uh, build, a, let's call it traditional installer, uh, for those uh, cases in, in which you cannot simply deploy an image, that because in SLE 16 we, uh, we expect many users will just deploy pre-built images, but there are still many scenarios in which you need a traditional installer doing the partitioning, package, and so on. And the just thing wants Agama to be the, uh, that traditional installer for SUSE Linux Enterprise 16. But don't take this as any kind of a statement, because that's not something for the just team to decide. Uh, and in the same way, it's not for the Justin to decide what will be the, the, the installer for uh, microOS or for Tumbleweed or for Leap in, in the future. So it's, uh, uh, it's partially the reason why we are here. Not that we need an excuse to come to OpenSUSE conference, it's always a pleasure, but we really want to have as, as much feedback, feedback as possible to know how to move forward. So for this first demo, I'm talking about moving forward, I will just choose OpenSUSE microOS, and then Agama will read my disks and will uh, read all the information from the product. And this is the first screen I will see. That gives me an overview of what is going to be installed. And also, uh, here I should see a big install button, but it's not there because I have not defined it how I want to authenticate into the new system. So that's the very first thing I need to do. So if I go there, uh, I can configure that to authenticate into the new system. I can define a first user, and then I can use sudo or whatever, or I can define the root authentication via SSH keys, or the simplest one would be to set the password. <coughs> Sorry. And as a new feature for this presentation this year, I will try to remember the password uh, at the end of installation so we can log into the system. That, so, yeah, uh, you can probably help me if I do this. So, please memorize it in case I forget till the end of the process. So, now I have set a, a root password, if, so the install button is there and I can proceed. But that will be a very poor demo. So, let's first uh, see what, we can, what else we can configure. And that also gives me, again, an excuse to explain other of the design principles of Agama is that we want the installer to do all things that are better done during installation. Like, for example, partitioning or configuring the network because you may need it to access your, your repository, your software, or, or your remote storage. But we are trying to not do anything that is really not especially valuable to be done do, during installation and can be done on the first boot. So in that regard, we aim to have less uh, fine-tuning options that we have in Just. But anyway, you can change the localization because it's important that on the first boot you already have your keyboard. For example, maybe you, don't, you will not even be able to enter the, the, the password if you don't have it properly set. You can configure the network, both wired and Wi-Fi, with everything you will expect. Uh, the storage uh, section is the most complex one. There will be a separate demo for it. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to, to click here to see that since we are installing microOS, there is a... Um, warning there or a message there explaining that this is an immutable system, that you will not have all the options you want in a storage because otherwise this will stop being immutable. So, uh, and then there is this software section that uh, it's somehow the most experimental one, not because we are doing nothing very special here, it's just about installing patterns, but it's because um, mm, uh, we are considering how to uh, provide a reasonable uh, amount of customization in terms of installing packages without really uh, making it a mess. Because in Just, you, if you know how, in Just you can reach to a point in which you have a full-fledged pattern selector. And there are hundreds, literally hundreds of packages there. And not all packages are created by the same set of people, with the same philosophy, and so on. And that's not something we want to happen in Agama. In Just, it's not such a big problem because in one of the first installation steps, you have this system role selection. So depending on the role you selected, I want a server, I want a, or in this case for microOS, you can say that you, you want a, the container runtime or the compatibility for whatever. So in those cases, by the way, the system is in, is in Spanish for some reason, whatever. 
So um, if, if you do so, uh, you already get a, a reasonable selection of patterns, but we are not sure we want to bring uh, system roles to a gamma, at least not in the same, with the same meaning and the same implication we have in Just. So this is something we need to talk about. So that's what I wanted to uh, stop a little bit in, on this section. So you could, for example, in the case of, of, of uh, MicroS, to say this is going to be to run containers and is a um, cert re a agent for a remote attestation, whatever that means. Uh, or it can be a verifier. Those two, for example, conflict with each other, but those are the, but I could, for example, do this and this, and that's, that will not conflict. But if we use uh, system roles, actually that will, you could even have both for no good technical reason. So we want something better than the, than the system roles. So okay, I have done all that already, and as I said before, I could just go to install, and that would be already a nice demo, but you could say, okay, this is kind of a modern U UI for, for just, but where is the revolution? So let's, just, let's start doing things that are actually um, technical uh, leap compared to, to just. Um, let's start by remote installation. By remote installation, I mean that you are installing your Linux in a system uh, in which you don't really necessarily have a screen and a, and a keyword attached to it, but you are actually using another machine through the network to drive the installation process. So who the, uh, here usually performs remote installations with Yast or, or auto Yast? Okay. Uh, sorry? Uh, prefers or uses regularly. Yeah, I don't care. But I see some hands, like four or five, but actually in cooperative environments, that uh, almost everyone will raise the hand because in cooperative environments, uh, a big part of the installations are actually remote. And you can do that with Just by, for example, using SSH, but then you have to use the text-based installer, which is nice enough, but this is definitely not the graphical one. Or you can have the graphical one, but then you use, you to use BNC, or you need to root uh, HC11 over uh, SSH or whatever. Uh, but what if I tell you that you could have the same, and, and also that means that the controlling machine has to have at least SSH or a VNC client. So it's, it's already, the controlling machine is already quite a specific machine. But what if I tell you that you can't do that remotely with something you all carry in your pocket with, as you may uh, uh, already suspect, is a web browser. So if I open this web browser from another machine, because it is my machine, my laptop, so I'm connected to the virtual machine, so it's literally a different machine, I could access to the installation of this uh, taking care. So, um, and uh, this is asking for a root password. Of course, the local interface didn't do, but if I, if I connect remotely, I need the password. I already set it while booting the, 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 install, the, the Agama Life uh, system, but I didn't want to spend that much time on the presentation during the whole process because I'm actually quite tight on time. So if I manage to enter the correct password, then it's taking a couple of seconds to load, and then I have exactly the very same interface, but from remote. And it's not exactly the very same because this is all, well, not all in Spanish, it's partially in Spanish because I'm using a development version that has not been, is not still published, so there are new strings. But generally, we have Agama already translated to several uh, languages, including Swedish, Spanish, uh, German, um, um, and I don't know, like five or six. We, and, I, and I must say thanks to whoever contributes the, the translation, because it's really incredible that you are doing your own experiment. You are doing your own experiment. You just put it on OpenSUSE web late. And in a matter of hours, we always have at least five full translations of it. So really kudos to all the translators doing that. So in my case, you see that this is in Spanish because that's how my, my browser is configured. I have the browser configured to negotiate the pages I visit in Spanish, so, and that's something that, that Agama actually supports. So Agama recognized my browser to be in Spanish, so it's, it's giving me the interface in Spanish. I will change it because learning Agama is enough. You don't need to learn Agama and Spanish at the same time. So, and as you may see here, I cannot change the keyboard layout because that's the keyboard layout of my uh, desktop. 
But if I will, if I will do in the same, in the virtual machine, actually, I have both options. I can change the local keyboard and if I'm installing locally with a keyboard attached to it. Um, I told you that with this you can install from the browser you have on your pocket on your mobile phone. And to prove that that's right, let's, for example, go to the most complex interface we have, which is storage, which is, doesn't look like something simple. But thanks to the magic of Firefox, I believe I can do something like this. OK. And this emulates any device, like a, I don't know, like an iPad, uh, in portrait or landscape. And as you can see, the interface adapts to it. For example, there is not enough space to have that sidebar, so the sidebar becomes collapsible here. All the interface becomes vertical, so it fits. I have big buttons that I can press with my fingers and so on. And as long as I, as I get a bigger uh, screen, now I have two columns, now I have the sidebar back, and so on and so on. So it's a fully responsive uh, interface in parts. And now, uh, as we go deeper into the presentation, you will find that it's still not there in some areas. But generally, it's a fully responsive interface that can work from any device. And maybe you also noticed that uh, uh, when I entered the root password, it took a little bit to load. Well, it was just one or two seconds, but it could be more in, in some environments. But after that, it goes really smooth. There is really no difference between doing all this in the local interface or here. It, uh, with the session of the storage page, but that's for the problem I already explained, everything loads automatically. And that's because to communicate the browser and a gamma running, we are not sending the whole page with all, uh, with all bells and whistles every time, but we are communicating through um, a gamma specific protocol based on HTTP. So it's really lightweight. It's as lightweight as using SSH, actually, because you are just sending a gamma commands and getting a status from a gamma. And it's, it's really uh, uh, something you could do on, on a very, uh, uh, unreliable or very slow network, just like SSH installation. And of course, you can use that protocol for much more than creating this web interface. It's an HTTP protocol, so you can use it, for example, to uh, connect to Uyuni or to SUSE Manager in the future to, uh, come to drive the installation process and to monitor how it's going. Or you can use it to, if you have your own infrastructure with, I don't know, salt or whatever, as long as you can talk HTTP and process JSON, you can do everything the interface can do because actually that's the mechanism the, the interface is using. So it's not that we expect people to just use plain HTTP, HTTP manual, craft their own HTTP calls, but since I know there are quite some computer nerds in the audience, that's exactly what I'm going to do to show the HTTP interface, to just do manual HTTP calls. So I have created very, very simple scripts. They are all one-liners that will use curl to just uh, check the configuration or, 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 or change any aspect or whatever. So if I'm using this, this interface, I need to do the same that when using the web, that is first I need to log in. And for that, these are the scripts I have. I have created a very simple login script that will be the nightmare of any security advisor because it's going to do the HTTP request and then we'll get a session token and we'll print it on the screen and we'll put it on a text plane, on, on a text file uh, here. But it's just for demo purposes. Don't do that with your session tokens. But now in this headers.txt file, I already have the session token, so I'm already locked for subsequent calls. And now I will show how simple it is, for example, to get the configuration of uh, of the localization part, for example, is as simple as one single curl call. It's in two lines for readability, but it's one simple curl call using the headers I got and asking for a, a specific endpoint. And that's what you get. You get the configuration of the locales. But you can also change it with one simple HTTP call again. I have a, another script for that. That's unsurprisingly is just it's called set came up. If I check, uh, as you can imagine, it's just another 
call, in this case it's not using get, it's using patch, which is the HTTP verb for modifying things. So if I check again the status, I should, please, yes, I should see the kebab in, in Spanish. If I go to the other interfaces, I see that it was changed already to Spanish. So I can, I can just uh, uh, keep going with this. So I hope you are already thinking of how you can use this, uh, this HTTP interface to build your own tools. And I will not be surprised if any one of you is already thinking now, how can I use this to build my own command line tool to control the whole installation process from the terminal in my basement without using any mouse or anything. And the good news is that you can actually do it. And the better news is that you don't have to do it because it's already there. So I'm going to log in to the machine being installed with the same password I said for remote administration at the beginning. I will trust the fingerprint. We can discuss more about security, but we already have the, all the mechanisms to ensure the fingerprints are correct or to provide your own certificates and all that. But for the time being, I'm pretty sure that in my laptop everything is secure enough. Um, and then I can execute this command called Agama that, as you can see, allows me to modify the configuration, allows me to uh, to in, uh, start the installation process and, and to answer to questions. So Agama may be asking something like, hey, I found an encrypted device. Can you give me the password so I can open and inspect it? Or, or do you want me to ignore it or whatever? So there's, with this command, you can answer to those questions. And let's use it to uh, so, for example, the configuration, uh, I did it the other way around, is config. So, so then you have the, the XML with all the, basically all the information you can find if you browse. I, I will use some bash magic to make it look a bit more readable with colors, but basically you can uh, see everything that you could see if you move through all the other sections in the UI and if you want to change something you can simply do config edit and it will open your favorite browser that if you are a decent human being human beings will be beam and then you can use beam to just create your own first user with whatever password you want. So now I just quit, beam, and it reloads the configuration as you, you saw it flickering also in the background. So if you go to any other of the interfaces, now I already set the root password using the web UI, and I already set the uh, first user just using the command line and, and config edit. So that's all this reminds you maybe about something, this idea of having the full the configuration of the browser in some structured format that, let's call it a profile, that you can then edit that profile and fit the installer so it adapts the installation process. Autojust, anyone? So this is basically what Autojust does. Autojust takes a profile, it can tell you, even it can export uh, with the current configuration of a system and then you can use that customize it, and then you fit Autojust with that profile. And that's actually an, a, a, one of, another one of the features with Agama. There is no, the automated installation and the, and the interactive one are not, uh, are not two siblings anymore. They are just the very same person. So it, you really can control the installation using a profile or the HTTP. So for example, you could start everything automatically using a profile. You set everything from the beginning with a profile, but then you stop the process. You connect interactively. You do any customization, and you continue again automatically. And then while you are continuing automatically with, let's say, with Autojust, you still have your SUSE manager or Unity or whatever uh, infrastructure, and you just uh, use the HTTP interface to to follow the process. So all it is, it, everything is the same. And to prove that, let's, let's, let's actually do it uh, with everything at once. So let's trigger the installation here on the command line that will be Autojust, kind of. And it will start, hopefully. 
is preparing the disk and all that, and if I go to the background, it's preparing this, it's installing software and so on. And if I want to follow it with my HTTP uh, uh, monitorization, whatever, I have another one liner here, pass a script that is, I call it HTTP monitor, and I can basically see the same messages I see here with package installing, which step of the total is, is, is happening, and that's again just a single call to a single command. It's not uh, cool this time, it's WebSocket, which is um, a small application that does exactly that. that. It connects to a WebSocket and prints everything that gets into the WebSocket. Uh, I guess there are many tools that can do that. So, I promised you, promised you two demos. So let's, while this is installed, it will take a while. It's installing all the packages. Well, it's almost finishing already, but let's jump to the second demo, which is about the storage setup. So let me first ensure I can open the demo before I go further, just in case something happens. Okay, it looks good. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, as I told you about, what are the storage possibilities? That means regarding configuring uh, LBM, partitioning, etc. So the, fair, the answer to your first question is no, we don't have the expert partitioner on this interface yet. That doesn't mean we will not have it. That means we are trying a different approach at first, which is uh, using uh, the the, what we call in the JAST interface, the guided setup, which more technically would be the JAST storage proposal, that you know that when you're installing with JAST, it will, uh, you tell JAST that you want to install on a certain disk, that you want to keep Windows or not, instead, or, or to wipe the disk. You tell JAST you want LBN or encryption, and then it automatically calculates basically all the partitions that are needed. If you want separate home, it distributes the, the, the sizes of the partition, and, and a lot happens at a very high level, and automatically, and even better, just knows which additional partitions may be needed for booting. So if you are in an EFI system, it will create boot EFI. If there is already boot EFI because there is another operating system installed, it will share it with it. So basically, what if I will be a sales guy, I will say that's an artificial intelligence system, which actually it is in the classical definition. Um, but so what we want to do with Agama is to keep using that, but it's true that uh, we get some feedback that people really like it and it's really powerful and it's really intelligent, but uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't fulfill the needs of the user because, for example, okay, the basic installation is fine, but I need a separate bar lock audit partition because some security certification. So the result I get, and then I, I need to modify it with the expert practitioner because I don't have this. Or, yeah, generally it's fine, but I wanted uh, uh, data, my data to be on a slash whatever in a separate disk. So I want to create another partition on a separate disk with uh, specific requirements. Or I don't like how just calculates the boot, the partitions needed for booting. I trust that they are fine, but I, I believe I know better than just, so I want to have a very, very small EFI for because this is an embedded system, whatever, so I want to tweak uh, just suggestions in that regard. So our solution for that is not going to the expert practitioner, but we, what we wanted to try is to have an interface that allow to still use the storage, um, uh, the just storage proposal, but really allowing uh, people to do everything they want. This is the phase is still a bit complicated. I'm more interested in showing you that the possibilities are there and then this system will work whatever you ask it to do. It's actually the very same code, the serving algorithm that is uh, powering uh, Just, but this time it, you really have the, op the, the possibility to open the hood and tweak every single node. But since there are a lot of possibilities and I'm, I'm not really good at keeping time, I will check my notes to make sure I don't overdo. So first, this is the initial proposal. We have configured for now Agama in Tumbleweed. This is Tumbleweed because with microOS I wouldn't have so many possibilities to show you. So, but uh, this is a second machine, a second virtual machine also running in my laptop, but running a, a Tumbleweed installation. And it's the one I use for testing this. So it has two disks, 
one. This is basically the typical Windows one, but the other one has a, a leap, a encrypted, uh, encrypted home, and a lot of space in the end. So basically, uh, funny things to play with. Um, but by default, uh, uh, Agama is just using the first disk, and as I said, we have not tweaked the initial proposal yet, so we are just telling Agama to use the first disk, delete everything. That's it. Unless the user wants to change things, but by default, that's what we do. So uh, here you can see that it's, this is going to be the final layout. So there will be a good EFI because it's an EFI system and a big root and a relatively, relatively big swap because by default it will try to be as big as the RAM. And you can see here all the actions that include deleting many partitions. Let's say you don't want that. You can always uh, tweak the actions that will be done to, um, to make a space. So for example, you can tell it that you just want to string the system partition but not kill anything. You can tell it just use the available space, don't touch anything. Or you can do a custom configuration of everything. So for every single partition on the target disk, you can decide to allow to resize, to delete, or whatever you want. Let's go for the simplest one with shrinking. And then Windows will survive. And uh, the boot FE part the FE partition of Windows will be saved. So this is the FE partition from the Windows installation. We will reuse it. And we will create our own stuff in the size we are stealing from, from Windows. Uh, but this, this is kind of boring, because it's just the typical Windows one. So let's switch to another one. As I said, we have two here. And this other one contains a, a leap of partitions and some empty space at the end. In case you need to decide, uh, you are not sure which this is one. You have here the model, uh, all the operating system. And if you need even more information, you can open it. And you can see all the partitions on each of the disks. So you can be sure you are selecting the one you wanted to select. If you miss any disk here, you have a, here the option to connect to ISCSI disks or to DUST uh, in the case of S390 mainframes or to set FCP or whatever is pronounced, uh, all, all those uh, mainframe technologies that allow you to configure extra disks and, and make them available for installation. And there is also the option here to configure that you want to use LBM. We will see that at the end if, if I don't run out of time. So if I'm choosing this another disk, everything is recalculated again. And this is every time I say everything is recalculated, it looks slow because, as I told you, there are some parts in which we still have the copic way of doing things coexisting with the new way of doing things. So we have too many data conversions and all that that will be fixed. So this will be much, much faster. So now it basically will use the space at the end. Because I have a space at the end of this, it will share the boot FE with the, with the lib that is installed there, um, and will use the rest for this. So why exactly is, is deciding to use three, uh, eight, 381 gigabytes for RAM, in case you are curious? now. All that is explained, all the, all the sizes that are being used and why is now being explained. That's the main difference with, uh, with just, and not only explained, but you can change it. And that's, if I open this part here, that is so with me a summary, and I will open it full, but please don't get scared. This part is still not adapted to the US, so it looks like really, like kind of an iframe uh, with everything put there. But, this is telling me that I'm, I'm using a snapshot, and then I have, I'm creating two mon points, one for swap, one for root, and what are the sizes that I, is, use, is being used to calculate those, uh, this uh, layout on the, on the right. Um, here I can see why those are the sizes. It's because I'm using a snapshot and because I don't have a home. And I can see here why I'm using that specific size of, of RAM, and that's because it's is meant to be the same amount of the, of the RAM of the system. So if I disable snapshots, for example, it gets recalculated again. And the result actually has not changed. I still have exactly the same layout. But actually, now the minimum is five. But since I have plenty of value, I will use it. So the, the preconditions have changed, but the result doesn't have to. And I could, for example, say, OK, I don't want the swap to be as big as the as the RAM, so I can just edit it. And this form is also alias hell, sorry for that, for hurting your eyes. This will change 
the sooner the better. And again, you are free to open pull requests to fix all the forms that are still not responsive or that look like in 19s. And now it's creating a swap only two gigabytes, and I have a bit more space for the root. Let's think even further. Okay, why then I have this swap if I already had the swap partition from the lib? I want to reuse the swap partition from the lib. I want to share it, or just reuse it just because. And that's something that just sometimes did automatically, but we don't want this to be that automatic, because now you can see what is happening, you, you can influence what is happening, so you can do it yourself. That's just another example of the many things you could do, and another example of a horrible interface, but you can change the location of swap and tell, tell Agama that you want to reuse this swap partition and format it. You could even tell it that you want to reuse your previous home, and of course, I expect that if you reuse your previous home, you don't format it. But you can do everything. You can tell it that to create your data partition in a separate disk and to really create it from scratch, or to just use a partition that exists on another disk and, and, and keep the file system there without really uh, creating a new, uh, reformatting it. All combinations are possible, and you're always working at this high level of abstraction and whatever is needed for booting, part to create partitions, to mode things. Agama will do it. You are not in the expert partition or doing a single step by yourself. And uh, I still have room for a bit more. So, for example, let's say another thing. This was auto because of home and snapshots. I already disabled a snapshot. Let's add a home, for example, with whatever size we want, as minimum of I don't know, 13. And then we see the result that, first of all, we see here that now. Is there is a minimum and a maximum because we have a separate home, so we don't we don't want the root to just grow for nothing, because we have decided for OpenSUSE, and again this can be configured per distribution, but for OpenSUSE as a home system, what it makes sense is that if you have a separate home, you want the space for home, and you just need whatever you need for the system. That may change now that we are containerizing things and so on, but that will be for the release managers to decide on the limits. But we are just using the traditional limits we have in the just configuration. We are just copying and pasting those traditional limits here. So now the root will grow up up to 15, and the rest will be given to home, which is again what you should expect. And so on, so on. This can become very complex. I guess half of you have been already been lost, and uh, we probably can make uh, interfaces that are simpler to understand. But what we really wanted to show you is that uh, with this, you can do everything like having an LBM. If an LBM, you can have it over several disks. Let's, let's do it on the very same disk just to not uh, get you even more lost. So now it's the same setup, but at the end of the disk, we don't have the partitions anymore. What we have is the physical volume. For this new logical volume, uh, sorry, uh, LBM uh, volume, whatever. And then we have the logical volumes for home and root. And of course, you can encrypt it. Just for extra fun. Um, if you do so, for example, in this testing machine, uh, I have a TPM because I, it's something I wanted to, to, to test as well. So uh, if you have a TPM chip on your system and you are using EFI, you can automatically uh, open the encrypted devices during book uh, using the TPM. It's probably something you don't want to do in your laptop but it's pretty useful in, in servers where you are not usually sitting in front of the server just waiting for it to, to boot and so you can enter the password so you could trust the TPM of your system to automatically open it. So again, I could spend here another half an hour uh, seeing also now you can see that this is encrypted and this is encry and the, the physical volume is encrypted, the logical volume does, don't need to because it's already encrypted at physical volume level and same for the swap that we are creating. So. I will not bore you anymore with options. I just wanted to show all the possibilities we have with the core of Agama. And of course, we can work on the interface. We can work on the usability. Uh, but all that, by the way, can be done also with auto, with a profile. It's not auto just anymore. It's auto Agama if you want so. So you can configure anything at a much higher level of, of abstraction than with auto just. Yes, and you can also do it, of course, at the lower level. So let me close uh, by by seeing what's next, the very next steps, like the ones we are already working on, we already, of course, know them. 
and it's first consolidating all the chains I just saw because we have these problems with the parts that are still slow or with the, or with the UI that is, is consistent. We are actively working on that. We are also working a lot on auto just, uh, another on auto installation. Uh, we have a very high level of compatibility with auto just. So in many, many cases, auto, uh, Agama is already a drop-in replacement for, for auto just. Uh, there will be more information about that on the subsequent uh, uh, session that is tomorrow and will be basically driven by Joseph, but I will be there as well uh, in the same way that Joseph is here today. And there is um, another feature we know already we want to implement. It's something we introduced in just very recently uh, that is called security profiles. And it's basically a way to make sure that if you have to comply to some um, security standards, some DISA stick, whatever, uh, FIPS, uh, uh, you can already say that to the installer and it will make sure that everything actually fits. And it will probably run even uh, open a SCAP on the first boot of the system to make sure everything compl complies. But for longer uh, goals, we actually need more feedback to decide what exactly do. We want to work on making uh, Agama more adaptable to other use cases of SUSE products and of open SUSE distributions. And we need to have conversations for that. And again, that's why we are here. So also, we want to evaluate what to do about system roles, as I already mentioned. So I'm inviting you, everyone, to the session tomorrow with Joseph. That will be more interactive because it's not so tight on a schedule. So there will be more room for interruptions, asking dialogues, whatever. Don't wait for the session. Just talk to us right here, right now, uh, at the beer garden at any point. We will be both be here for the whole conference. And if you are not here, you have the usual channels, the IRC, uh, the, the project page at, 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 at GitHub, may, just mailing list, and if you work for SUSE, you have even more channels like Slack. So before leaving you free, I still own you the end of the presentation of the demo because, okay, the installation is now done, and in theory, if everything goes well, and it will make actually, so if I now boot from the hard disk, there is a micro SDR that looks good enough. So let me, let's make sure it boots. Uh, so that's the first demo we did. We run the full installation. We control the progress. We actually triggered it with a command line, which is kind of equivalent to AutoJust. We configure it partially with the web UI, partially with a, with a HTTP interface. And now it boots. And now, let's see. I can log in. Loot. It's in a, the keyboard is in Spanish because I was able to type the, 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 the proper character at the first attempt. So it should be the keyboard is in Spanish, it's indeed an uh, open source micro, and it should have also another user, yeah, and that is layout. So basically, that proves that. Uh, that yeah, the live demo worked. So. I survived, and I hope to see you. If you have any questions, I don't know how much time we have for, for questions, but just please use it, and if not, see you tomorrow. So what is the vision um, after you've installed this system? Would there be also the Agama interface available to then like configure and see the status of that? Or is that what then cockpit would still be needed for? Uh, no, for already installed system, there are no plans to have anything like Agama so far. In theory, the, so the one-to-one -one configuration manager to, to, to really configure things interactively. So far, uh, the decision for SLE 16 is that it will be a cockpit and whatever cockpit offers. And for mass deployments, uh, it will be any configuration management like SALT. But Agama, that's another big difference with JAST, that JAST is both an installer and a configuration tool. And Agama is only an installer, maybe in the future also an update tool. It can be used maybe in the future to do off, what we call offline installations. That is, that the, the system is not running, but you just use a live image or whatever to 
go from, let's say, SL16 to SL16.1 or SL15 service pack, whatever, to, to 16, or the same applies to lib. But there are no plans for it to be a general configuration tool for the already installed system. Go to the mic, please. How are you making sure that the changes you introduce and the interface is usable for the actual user? We need feedback for that, as I said. Uh, we are always rethinking things, trying basically ourselves. We are also trying to, but we, we are not as far as we would like, but we are also trying to make sure we have some accessibility in place because uh, using web technologies, there are several uh, facilities to create more accessible uh, screen, uh, for screen readers and so on. Uh, but we really need usability tests and we need accessibility tests. Uh, the problem so far is that we, are, we have been working so, so much in the interface and changing it so fast that it was not really room for that. But now that we are, we are coming together to a user interface that we like more, because as, as I said, this, this interface you see is still not published. It's, this is a pre-release. It will be released probably tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow during Joseph talk we will announce that you can already download an official version of Agama Live with this interface. And uh, we expect to have an interface we are happy with in uh, some months, uh, a couple of months, uh, as I said, even faster if people contribute. And then we will start really needing feedback uh, about usability, both usability and accessibility, because we are worried about both. It's not only about the usability for the most common users, also people who, know, who need screen readers and all that. We really have no clue how to improve the, the experience. Thank you. If no more questions, then see you around.